minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition and launch. Go back in. Go Korea side. has successfully lifted off from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center, carrying the KoreaSat 6A satellite. During ascent, we tilt or gimbal the engines, and that turns the rocket horizontally, power and telemetry nominal, a maneuver known as a gravity turn. We're still going up, but now we're also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. And moments ago, we throttled the engines down in preparation for max Q or maximum aerodynamic Rocket pressure. Rocket 9 is supersonic. Great callouts on the nets. And Max Q is a critical moment during flight because the combined stresses caused by Falcon 9 uh, that are caused by Falcon 9 accelerating through the atmosphere and the ambient static pressure are at their greatest. Max Q. Great callout for Max Q right there. The rocket typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid back, being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. Now we have six events coming up in quick succession. Main engine cutoff, or MECO, stage separation, stage one flip, second engine start one, or SES one, boost back start, boost back burn start, and fairing separation. During MECO, we'll shut down the nine Merlin engines, which is followed by stage separation. Once separated from the second stage, the booster will flip Vehicle its orientation. Following a nominal trajectory. The booster will flip its orientation and begin heading back to Earth with a short boost back burn, while simultaneously the second stage M back engine will ignite for the first time, followed quickly by fairing separation. We should see all of those events happening back to back in the next few seconds. Stage separation confirmed. Stage one boost back startup and back ignition. Awesome views on the screen of those events that happened back to back. Miko stage set, S1 flip, and SES1. Fairing separation confirmed. An awesome view of fairing separation as well. We'll be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves again today once they fall back to Earth using our recovery vessel, Doug. Next up, we are waiting. Stage one boost back shutdown. And we just had confirmation that we completed our boost back burn. So it's about T plus three minutes and 40 seconds into today's mission. And at T plus six minutes and 32 seconds, we expect to have some great views of the first stage entry burn. For the entry burn, we relight three of the M1D engines on the first Both stage. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. Starting with the center E9 engine, followed shortly after by the E1 and E5 engines, which slows down the vehicle as it passes back into Earth's atmosphere. We need to slow down to reduce reentry forces, which ultimately helps us recover and reuse the first stage. During the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but we're still moving really, really fast. And this causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, which are also called, which is also known as the rocket's plume. And this deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle surface, which is why our flight-proven vehicles look so toasty. And that soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, the RP-1. 
Reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investment in critical scientific research. And as a reminder, the Falcon 9 first stage that is supporting today's mission will be performing this entry bird for its 23rd time. It is a super clear today, and we have some really great views. You can see that both the Stage 1 and Stage 2 vehicles continue to pick up speed. The Merlins on the first stage are the optimized. The continue to follow nominal trajectories. Great callouts there. The Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve around 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and entry. The MVAC engine is optimized to operate in space and produces 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. So after landing burn, after entry burn and landing burn, we will shut down our MVAC engine on the second stage and then the landing burn will actually happen after that. And as a reminder, we are targeting a landing at landing zone one at Cape Renown. one entry burn startup. And there is the beginning of entry burn. Stage one entry burn shutdown. An awesome view of stage one's entry burn as it heads back towards landing zone one at Cape Canaveral Space Both Force Station. Both continue to follow nominal trajectories. In about 30 seconds, we will begin the landing burn on stage one, where the center engine E9 Stage one, FTS has saved. Stage two is in terminal guidance. Stage one, transonic. All great, stage 